Right, Steamer Joe. Morning, March fourth, twenty seventeen, and uh, I've finished buttoning up all the little details on the Sirius. I packed the uh, around the cylinders with that ceramic insulation. Uh, got as much of it in there as I could to help keep the cylinders hot. Uh, fooled around with the drain cocks, but. I think uh, I may mount these with the axis of the uh, operating handle horizontal instead of vertical as they are now, just to make it easier to get in there to them without getting burned. I did, uh, I added this pipe, uh, you know, the original drawing specified exhaust pipe was just this little stub <laughs> and as I was testing it it kept blowing little drips of oil out on me so I put that pipe on there to direct the exhaust uh, off to the side and I'll probably in fact I will use some kind of an exhaust assembly when I have it set up to run on steam and the this inlet assembly uh, now this deal here is just soft soldered up, just a way to keep the oil off me, but I've, I've silver soldered this, and uh, I'll extend that out and connect it to the boiler when I'm running it on steam. Uh, I ran it at an angle as well so I could get into the drain cocks. Uh, I went ahead and, oh I finished the, the breather tube, crankcase breather and the dipstick and there's a little mark on there that shows the full full mark um, so those are the last couple of pieces I had to machine I, uh, there's, of course there's no automatic lubrication for the for the piston valve now except what might blow past the pistons and get to the upper end on the exhaust uh, but I've got that loaded with 30 weight oil this morning. And uh, I'm going to run it. Of course, I've already run it. It runs quite well. But uh, I wanted to show how well it runs. And But I don't have any load for it yet. I'm going to talk about the load in a minute. But uh, I'll go ahead and run it a little bit. Uh, just so you can see it and hear it. But... Uh, it's kind of pointless in a way without any any load on it and um, but we'll look at it a lot of times guys will run the the engines real slowly until they just tick over and this one will tick over at a real slow speed but it's designed to run at high speed and actually I wouldn't want to run it for any extended period slowly because I don't think it'd oil properly without the splash lubrication. Well, that sound is not a squeak; it's the it's the exhaust whistling. But it runs very fast. Again, no load. You'd expect that it would. It's designed for high speed operation. But uh, I've spent the last couple of days working on coming up with a load for the engine. And a guy I know has a, an alternator shop where he, he works on alternators. So I went in and talked to him and explained what I was doing. He's kind of a hobbyist, too. And he had some of these uh, small alternators. I've got the rotor out of this now because I'm going to machine on it, but I think this was off of uh, like a, a mid-80s little Datsun car, but they're rated at 35 amps, and they they fit the scale better for the for the engine. I'm gonna I'm gonna mount it in line with the crankshaft and use Lovejoy couplings to hook the two together. But it's it's not so out of scale as a big automotive 
alternator would be. This is the rotor. And I, I learned some terminology while I was doing this. The, I'd seen some information about how you could alter the current to the field, which will vary the output of the alternator. Uh, so, as it turns out, the rotor is the field. I guess they use the terms interchangeably, but by altering the current to the rotor through these slip rings, you can adjust the output of the alternator. And, and this alternator had a, a, an internal voltage regulator. So, the guy at the shop showed me how the voltage regulator was under here. It was just a printed circuit board with a bunch of components on it. And he showed me how I could... This terminal is connected to the positive side of the system. And uh, he showed me how I could remove the alternator, bridge between these two terminals, which takes one of these pins in here to ground, which can then be adjusted... Uh, I found in my drawer this 25 watt, 20 ohm wire wound resistor. And so as a lash up, I grounded this end, connected this to the voltage regulator body, and just adjusted this slider to adjust the current, which wasn't real handy. But I've got a, a rheostat, 25 ohm, 25 watt rheostat coming. And uh, my plan is to machine this output shaft, which carried the pulley originally, down to a diameter that I can fit to the Lovejoy connector, and uh, come up with some way to mount the alternator in line. And I was surprised. I tested that by spinning it with my lathe. I mounted it in the lathe and supported the end with a center. Hooked up a voltmeter and ammeter. And it's amazing. Uh, the highest speed on my lathe down here in the shop is 2500 RPM. And running it at that speed, if I gave uh, uh, quite a bit of current to the rotor, uh, I'm not sure of the amperage. Again, I, I didn't even have a load there other than the the 12 volt battery I had connected to it, but um, this thing put out over 40 volts. So I don't know. You know, on a car, these have got a small pulley on on the alternator, and there's a large pulley on the crankshaft, and so you know these things spin 10 or 12 thousand RPM at high high engine speed. But at any rate. Uh, that speed that the engine was running a minute ago is about, uh, that's about 3,000 RPM, which is faster than I want to run it, but I also tested this at 1,250 RPM on the lathe, and it puts out plenty of power. So somewhere between, well, it'll depend under load what the, what the engine will even turn. I'm not sure... Uh, how that'll all work. I'm anxious to find out, but but I did build a put a gasket in between the crankcase and the box bed. And I mounted everything to this plate just because it's flat and solid. And I'll probably um, for the lash up with the alternator and all the associated electrical stuff, I'll, I'll probably mount this to a plank. I found an oak board over there that's that's nice and stiff and strong. I'll probably mount it on there. I did put a piece of neoprene rubber underneath this just to kind of dampen some of the vibrations. But uh, So the engine works good. Um, the alternator is, is turned into a kind of a project itself. But I'm going to be working on the getting the alternator connected to this, and in the meantime, also getting the, all the fittings I need to connect this to the boiler. And before long, 
I'll get to run it on Steam. That's what I'm really looking forward to, where I can load it down with the uh, the alternator and uh, I'll be posting that as soon as I get it uh, as soon as I get it going so till next time <laughs>